Welcome back everyone. Hi if you're new my name is Tori and today I'm going to share with you guys some books that I have read and loved across different sci-fi subgenres. But first I do want to mention that I know genre is this like weird really fluid thing and especially nowadays we're seeing a lot of books that are sliding into several different genres at once and then we have some that are just genre defying altogether so certainly these eight books that I have here can I think they can fit into a variety of different categories but for the purpose of this video I have put them into one so some of the books that I have here are books that I actually read a while ago and just have never mentioned on my channel before and then I have some here that are more recent reads for me that I'm really looking forward to sharing with you guys. So um, all that being said, let's get into the video. So the first subgenre that I have here is military sci-fi and this is actually a subgenre that I don't read too much in but I'm getting a little bit better at because I've had not so great experiences with military SF but I'm getting there so I think if you're interested in military SF I think you should definitely check out The Light Brigade by Cameron Hurley. This was amazing. I'm actually already spoiling my October wrap up because this is a book that I finished a couple of weeks ago and I am I'm still thinking about it. I'm still trying to process like what happened. I'm still trying to like comprehend the structure and I'm still like going back and flipping through and marking different places. Oh my gosh, this book was so well crafted. It is, it's really amazing. This takes place in a future where corporations pretty much control everything and you know people can work for these different corporations and then there are some people who work for them in the form of being soldiers and fighting in this war against Mars. So we have our main character Dietz who joins up in this war and pretty much how they are transported to the battle lines on different planets is these corporations can break their soldiers down into light and so they can break them down into light get them up on Mars and fighting against the war and so the first time our main character Dietz is broken down into light for their main mission something just goes completely wrong and pretty soon they realize that their experience in the war not in the same way that their other you know their other soldiers are experiencing it so I actually think this book is pretty difficult to talk about without giving anything away because I think the, the kind of the foundation of the plot is in itself a spoiler in my opinion so I'm not gonna say anything more than that but I think if you enjoy military SF or just if you enjoy a good story with a really good structure and just you want to have your mind blown while you're reading it like you need to put this on your radar. The next subgenre that I have here is post-apocalyptic and actually this is not a traditional novel that I have here it's actually a narrative art book and that is The Electric State and this is by Simon Stallenhog. I saw this in my local bookstore and I could not resist I was just standing there flipping through the pictures and I mean the artwork in here is absolutely gorgeous. That's just a little, little sneak peek. The artwork in here is beautiful. But in this we're following our main character uh, Michelle and she has this robot that she's traveling with in this ruined America and she's making her way across this just really creepy kind of eerie desolate landscape where there are all these ruins of drones that were part of this war and you don't learn until like the very end of the book like what our main character is looking for what she's trying to do so that is a spoiler but you know as she's making her way across this ruined landscape we're getting a lot of her backstory and just kind of what has happened to a lot of the people and how they're almost like addicted and turned into these mindless beings because of this headset that they use. So I didn't know what to expect going into this but I mean I wasn't really anticipating the story being as eerie as it was and as dark as it was. There are actually some moments in here that are just really unsettling and then you also have the artwork to go along with it as a companion and it just makes things really kind of eerie. So like look at oh my gosh this is gorgeous look at that. But just reading this story and watching it unravel is just alongside the artwork is it's such an experience. So the next subgenre that I want to recommend something from is space opera and this is a book that I have I don't think I've mentioned this book on my channel before. I read it last year but I read it during a time where I wasn't really uploading as much and so unfortunately this book got caught up in my like little dead zone of no uploading and that was A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martine and this is the first book in a series. The next book I forgot the name of it already but it's coming out in 2021 and I'm very excited for it. But this was incredible. The world building, just the politics, everything in this novel is just so on point. But in this we're following our main character Ambassador Mahit and Mahit is from a really small um, culture, a really small station and she ends up traveling to the capital of the empire in order to take up a new ambassador position 
transition from her predecessor. Why did that feel like a mouthful? In the process of this she realizes that her predecessor has been murdered and that Mahid herself could actually be next. So this book deals a lot with politics and just the politics of the empire and how in the cultures and everything which is just so fascinating to read about but also at its core there is a mystery element to this story as well as Mahit is trying to figure out what's going on. But one of my favorite things about this novel and then also the title itself it deals a lot with the concept of memory and how we process them. I think that whole discussion is just so well done in this book because Mahit comes from a culture where the people are implanted with the memories of people that have come before them and so Mahit's predecessor she actually has access to his memories but there's a huge gap in them and it just makes things even more difficult as she's trying to figure out what you know everything that's going on and just trying to navigate through the politics of the empire. I really enjoyed this. This was excellent and yeah I think if you're looking for a good story definitely have to check this one out. The next subgenre that I have here is I'm actually not sure if this is a subgenre but it it really should be and that is language. I am just I'm obsessed with language and linguistics but mostly in relation to uh, you know how they're used in relation to these really epic sci-fi concepts. I think it is just it makes for such an incredible story and I've only found so far like three books <laughs> three books that really fit the bill of like kind of what I'm looking for. One of the books is Babel 17 by Samuel R. Delaney. This was amazing. In this we are following our main character Rydra Wong and she's a poet but she also has a knack for languages. She's really good at deciphering languages, breaking them down and that's just that's what she does. And our story really begins though when there's this attack on a base and Rydra is approached with this code to decipher this code known as Babel 17 and as she keeps digging into it though and analyzing it looking at the the code she actually realizes that the code is a language and this language can be used as a weapon so I mean we are just really getting the breakdown of of that and just our story goes from there and it is just so fascinating it's so smart it's so just so skillfully crafted I really really enjoy my time with this book this was actually my first Delaney I still have I still have Dahlgren on my shelf. I really want to read Dahlgren before the end of the year but I got my I got my Delaney Brownie points from Babel 17 but I highly highly recommend this. This was great. The next subgenre that I want to talk about is steampunk. I steampunk to me is just it's pure fun and this next book that I have here I've only read the first book from. I actually I mentioned that I probably wasn't going to continue on with this series but I don't know I might go back to it because this is just it's pure entertainment and that is Retribution Falls and this is by Chris Wooding and this is steampunk it's like space pirate I mean you can't we get a little bit of everything in here but in this we're following our main character Darian Frey who's the captain of this really <laughs> misfit group of people and Darian himself he he is not on the up and up. He is a hot mess. He is just like supposed to be this charming kind of con artist type of person, the smooth talker, and has just gotten himself into trouble throughout the years. So uh, one day his crew, they stumble upon this abandoned ship and they want to loot it. And so they go to loot it and then it explodes and Darian is framed along with his crew. He is framed for this crime. And for once in his life, he actually didn't do anything wrong. So the whole book, he's just trying to figure out what is going on, bring, you know, kind of pull his crew together so they can like be functional enough to figure out what's going on. So this is just, it's pure fun. It's highly entertaining. Just easy to read. So I think this was like the most entertaining. I read this several years ago and it was the most like entertaining book I think I read in 2013, 2014, whenever I read it. So the next subgenre that I want to talk about is Afrofuturism and for this I'm going to recommend, highly recommend Rosewater by Tade Thompson and this is the first book in the Wormwood trilogy. I read Rosewater earlier this year and haven't really talked about it since but this book <laughs> it was a ride for sure. This novel takes place in a futuristic Nigeria in obviously the fictional town of Rosewater and in the center of this new town we have this um this dome that kind of has these magical weird properties to it and once every several years or I'm forgetting the timeline already but um every so often this dome opens up and people gather around it and they're supposedly healed of all of their ailments and it's just it's a really strange thing to have in the middle of town and so our main character though is Caro and he is what's known as a sensitive but he's also a government agent and he can actually 
tap into the powers of this dome and navigate that weird um, kind of psychic space of the dome. But something begins happening when the dome starts killing off the properties of the dome begin killing off other sensitives like Caro. And in order to get to the bottom of it, he just needs to confront things from his past and just we really go from there so i really enjoyed this this was so twisty and even still i'm like what in the world did i just read but i do want to pick up book two eventually but yeah this was such a great read and i highly highly recommend this the next genre that i want to talk about is cyberpunk and you guys already know probably what book i'm going to be recommending i haven't talked about this book in like almost a year now which is a crime and that is neuromancer by william gibson this was my first I think this is like my very first experience with a cyberpunk novel and I think this is a really polarizing novel like you're either gonna like Neuromancer or you're not but I love this book so much this was it was so much fun and I was really intimidated by it at first but once you get into it and really get acclimated with William Gibson's like language and writing style in this book in particular I think you'll really really enjoy it. In this we're following our main character named Case and he is a data hacker he steals information but he tries to steal from his employer and because of that they kind of strip him of his ability to hack into these different systems but one day um, when he's just down on his luck and drinking a lot he is approached by this woman named Molly who wants him to work for her employer and from there we just get this really intricate plot that just is such a fun and crazy ride so if you've been thinking about picking up this book I highly recommend you give it a chance this was it was so much fun but also at the same time I think it you know says a lot about technology and artificial intelligence and cyberspace and actually I love this book so much it is very rare that I do this I love this book so much I just went ahead and bought books two and three in the series because I'm very excited to read those and that is Count Zero and Mona Lisa Overdrive so I will be getting to those maybe in 2021 but yeah Neuromancer is it's a must read. And then finally the last genre that I have here is dystopian and for this this is going to be a little this is not going to apply to everybody but I love talking about this book so much and it's been years since I've done so. So for dystopian again this is not going to be for everybody. I'm going to recommend Bioshock Rapture and this is by John Shirley. So Obviously this book is a companion novel to the Bioshock video games. So if you have played the video games and you have not read this book what is happening you need to stop and read this book this is incredible it goes into a lot of the diary entries that we see in the first Bioshock and just starts piecing things together that were maybe overlooked while you were playing through the game so I oh my god I love this book so much but I think if you are not familiar with the video games at all I do think this could be unpopular opinion but I do think this book can stand on its own as a really strong dystopian novel in this so I'm just going to talk about it I try to talk about it separately from the games but in this we are following Andrew Ryan who is just this really big dreamer it's during a time of war and politics and religion are just uh, kind of all over the place and everything is just in this really tumultuous state and so Andrew Ryan he envisioned something just greater and so he wants to build this city rapture at the bottom of the sea and so he does that and he brings the best scientists with him the best doctors the best artists just everybody but I mean there's only there's only so much you can do with the bottom of the ocean and so people really start losing their minds and the scientists that he ends up bringing down to rapture they just begin experimenting with people's DNA their genetics and just everything becomes an absolute mess and we really get to see how rapture began and how the city also crumbles so I think again it's a great setup to the first game but if you're looking for a great dystopian novel with some really great ideas in it I recommend this. This was I love Bioshock Rapture so much it's so good. I think John Shirley does a lot of video game like novelizations and um, this is the only one that I've ever read by him but this this was so good and I do think it's just a really strong standalone dystopian novel but obviously if you've played the games you might appreciate it a little bit more but it's still it's still perfection in my opinion. So that's it for me you guys. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Let me know down in the comments if you have read any of these and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.